and welcome to Northwest Knitting. My name is Kathy, and this is my knitting podcast where I like to talk to you about my knitting projects, my fibers that I love, and my journey to make sustainable clothing. I live in Eugene, Oregon, in the Willamette Valley, uh, where we have had all kinds of changeable weather. On Thursday, I was scraping the ice off the windows <laughs> of my car, and by the, re by the end of that day, it was warm, and then we had weather in the 60s for three or four days, but now it's clouding up, so I think we're back to rain. But it really felt like summer had arrived, not just spring. But anyway, happy spring to you all. I can be found on Instagram and on Ravelry as Northwest Knitting. I'd love it if you like and subscribe if you enjoy this. And if you're a subscriber and you're wondering where the heck I've been, um, you can control your notifications. So if you go to your subscriptions or um, if you look at the subscribe button and press the down button after subscribe, you can um, ensure that you'll hear about my podcasts as soon as they come up. So that's the little ringing bell that shows up there. I found out that I, I was just not seeing a lot of my favorite podcasts. I was seeing the very popular, you know, everybody watches kind of podcast, but I wasn't seeing the, the um, less well-known. And um, so I changed my notifications on that. Um, let's see. Um, well, the weather has really thrown me into a tizzy. I am, of course, we were thrilled that the weather turned nice. We ran out into the garden as soon as it dried up <clears throat> and started weeding. And um, my fingers won't be clean until November again, <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, and so that has been fantastic. And just thinking about the possibility of eating outside and, and um, just um, there's so many joyful things that happen with the warmer weather. Although um, in recent years, it's become a little warm for me uh, by the time we get to um, later in the summer. Um, and um, so I'm not entirely ready to give up the wear your sweaters uh, weather. Um, and it immediately set me wondering, what the heck do I did I wear last summer and what do I have? So I did pull out some things that I'll um, mention as I, as I um, start thinking about my clothing going forward. But um, I will start today. <clears throat> I'll tell you my finished object, which is what I'm wearing. I have one other little finished object. Um, I have a big fail I want to tell you about, and um, I have a few um, whips going. So anyway, here I go. I'll start by telling you about my sweater. This is the Calliope by Melissa Clulo. Clulo, and she was. Um, at Espace Tricot and designed all kinds of clothing there. So this is one of the free Espace Tricot patterns. And um, now she is at Sonder Yarn, which I would dearly love to try um, sometime. Um, anyway, she just does all kinds of very, um, very simple to, um, sweaters that are just very attractive on and this is really no exception. I didn't have this in my favorites but the people a lot of people at um, who go to Youthful Fiber Farm um, mill days which happen once or twice a month um, in Halsey, Oregon um, were doing this sweater and I decided even though it was a completely spontaneous knit and I went and bought the yarn for it and immediately knit it up which is just so out of the norm. I did not need to buy the yarn. 
violating the little promises I had made to myself even just two months ago. But um, I just, there I was, so I bought some of the yarn at Youthful Fiber, and um, I've just been very happy with it. So it was a very fun knit, and for me, a very quick knit on size six needles. So um, the pattern calls for a fingering weight and a, um, I'll show you the picture of the sweater. It's, the notable thing really is the um, ribbing here and also some very long rib sleeves, which I actually made mine more um, ordinary length. Um, they call for, um, it looks like a fingering and a, um, and a silk mohair um, for how, for the prototype here. Um, I, but on, um, but it really comes to about a DK weight and the gauge is 20 stitches for four inches or 10 centimeters. And for me, well, and so that's about, um, uh, five stitches to the inch, and I could get gauge on um, size six um, needles. Oops. So the yarn I used was, I used um, um, Utopia Silk and Mohair. Whoop, no. Um, <laughs> this is the Silk and Mohair. And I just absolutely loved those colors um it's in the twilight color um and i held that together with cormo light fingering from sincere sheep and this cormo had almost 500 i might have had 500 yards um, in it, so it has phenomenal uh, yardage, and this was kind of the usual, you know, 450 or something for the silk mohair, and I held them together, and this is what it made. So you can see this is an absolute solid. This is uh, variegated, and it made um, this. Now, there is something about the camera that really picks up this white. It just really wants to shout the white, but um, in real life, it's a little bit more of a solid. And I'll show you the whole thing just so you can see. Um, I feel pretty happy with the looseness. When I first tried it on without blocking, I was a little nervous about it. It felt like it was just a little too tight, um, but with blocking, it just loosened you know, a lot. And the real notable thing here is this ribbing. It's an expanding rib, so it increases and gets a little wider as it goes down. And I really enjoyed that. But then there's raglan. So it's not just a circular yoke. You've got some nice raglan here, which I think makes the fit a lot better and um, a really nice long rib. Now I started, where's my rib? I did start it as high as recommended. Um, I finished it, I bound off, and then I went back and added probably another inch of the sleeves. And um, I really do notice that wool pulls um, even after you block it, it often just starts creeping up. And so I'm aiming for longer and longer sleeves um, because I, I do find that they they go up. See, it, these were just massively long when I started, and they're still perfect right this minute. But I notice with where they start creeping. Um, so... This time of year, it's not such a bad thing. This is obviously very, very warm for the weather we've had, um, but it's cool here. It's still pretty early in the morning and it's cool here in my little studio. Um, so it, it's pretty comfortable, but um, it's certainly not something I would have worn over the last three or four days. Um, I really enjoyed this. Um, I did, 
I did do a swatch so I could see what it looked like, but I did not watch wash the swatch. And um, I would have been happier if I had, because then I would have felt more confident about how it would look after blocking. So I caused myself a little anxiety being unsure of that. The pattern is intended to have quite a bit of ease to it. Um, there, they say the sweater is designed to have 10 to 14 inches of ease, which is a lot. Um, and I did not, let's see if I can find another. I really, really like, this is a free pattern, but it's got, um, it's just, it's got a nice, um, I don't see the picture with the person here. Oh, here we go. There you go. So you can see the original really has a lot of ease. And usually that's um, a bit much for me. Um, but sometimes I appreciate all the, the ease when I'm looking at the pattern. Then I think, oh, I don't really want that much ease. And then I adjust it. And then I'm surprised and amazed that it just doesn't have as much ease. Um, but I do feel pretty good about this. You can see there's there's lots of space here so it's very comfortable um a couple things about it when i pick my size as i have been doing for a while now i'm i picked my upper bust to pick the size at least for the top of the sweater and then as i went down the body after i um set after i joined this um separated for sleeves then I, as i went down I made, um, I made four, I increased four times, two on each side. So that gave me this more A-line shape because I'm, um, I'm at least, I don't know, I'd almost say two sizes, one or two sizes um, smaller in the shoulders. I just have very tiny shoulders and, um, Something, I don't like it when I'm like, <laughs> you know. Um, so anyway, I'm very happy with the fit on this. Um, I knew that I was going to, from looking at the numbers and everything, I was pretty sure I was going to be in size um, one to three, certainly at least for the top. Um, and it turns out that you do the whole ribbing and then you do, um, if you're doing size, sizes one, two, and three, um, you do at least 10 raglan increases before you have to decide what size you're picking. So that gave me, that was one reason I didn't, it's really not an excuse for not washing my swatch, but it did give, make me feel pretty confident what my gauge was um, by the time I got to um, 10 increases. So that was really nice. I really just like, oh, it's an, e it's an easy knit. And it is a very straightforward knit. And I just cast it on with abandon. But even the easy knits, you do put quite a bit of time in. So um, caution is probably a good idea. But um, I was just eager to join everybody. And there was an active um, uh, commenting on the Ravelry forum and um, um, some people had issues around the um, short rows. And I, I think that was because, well, I know that was because the beginning of the round was at one of the shoulders. And so all the short rowing went from the beginning of round so, um, but by the time I got to making the sweater, other people had hashed this out. And the way I dealt with it was I put a marker, I marked the beginning of round, which was right about here. And then I also did a marker for the absolute back of the sweater um, to help me judge that I was doing the um, short rows correctly. So, um, Anyway, it was just a, a very fun knit. It was fun to see um, what other people had done. Um, 
The reason I got this yarn is uh, Kamet Youthful Fiber has a lot of, has a number of U.S. milled um, yarns. And um, so some people who were uh, doing the knit along used some of her yarns. And the one she used was, um, see, there was like a green, um, Cormo with um, fingering and um, I think she used exactly the yarn I did but hers was like an orangey red and it's just so anyway I saw those I felt those and that's why I ended up buying this yarn so uh, it just has a great feel to it um, one thing I will say um, which I'm saying kind of to myself is if um, I, I know I'm not finished with mohair, I don't know what it is, but there are all kinds of yarns I can resist. I can, there's some beautifully dyed yarns. I can resist those if I don't need them, but there's something about mohair. It just gets me every time. It is so hard for me to resist. Do I have any more up here? Oh, like, like this is one I used and I ended up getting more of it because I just, it's just so soft and tender and oh. Anyway, the prob, but, so I know I will be knitting with more mohair, <laughs> um, but because I held them together, I have no idea what this Cormo fingering is um, like to knit with. And I do want to um, experience more breed specific yarns. Um, so I'm just telling myself, um, maybe, um, you know, break it up, experience um, some more of the specific breeds and um, not match everything with mohair. Um, one idea I do have is I haven't done Hohi Locatelli's Elton. Um, she has a cardigan and a pullover, and then she has a new one called Milton, which is another, um, it's a longer sweater um, without buttons, and um, all of these are you um, stripe. So you stripe with something like a fingering or sport, and then with, um, mohair and that would be a way that I could get my little mohair fix um, and still know more about the um, the wool that I'm knitting with. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so the weather really got me um, through my knitting plans into a tizzy I um, because I have some um, another um, one or two sweaters that I wanted to work on and um, and I just felt like oh it got so warm I didn't even think I wanted to work on on a, a woolly sweater so I don't know with the weather changing maybe I'll um, I'll get back to it but um, <clears throat> it did make me think I'm just really I did make me realize that I needed to to, to take stock of some of uh, the knits that I had made last year and the year before to see it, what I really need for summer before I launch into it so I do had a, have a few I'm just going to mention them really briefly um, and the reason I'm mentioning them is I am um, even though I have plenty of wool, I don't really have too much of uh, summer weight yarns. And last year, um, I did knit this Salty Air Tea with a hundred, um, I think it was a mostly cotton, and then it had a little bit of mohair in it. So this is one I had to pull it out and go, okay, you already have a dark blue uh, top. So no need for that. And then um, one of my f favorites 
I think was not, um, was it last, I think it might not have been last year, it might have been um, the summer before I made the, uh, um, so the salty air tea was the um, uh, Samantha Gurin, I believe, I'll put the link below to, to that and everything else I talk about. If I forget something, just let me know. This is the um, Trelawney top by, oh my gosh. Can't believe I've forgotten her name. I've knit several things of hers now. Um, anyway, I'll put the link, but this is one of my all time favorites. And I used uh, Queensland United yarn for this 50% uh, wool, 50% cotton and um, I just even though I normally wouldn't use half cotton for um, um, for a stranded work I just love I really love this sweater I could really see making another one and it works pretty well um, even when it gets warmer and then one of the and other ones that I did with um, Queensland United is my striped one. So you can see all the Queensland colors in there. And this one is my, is really large, not too large for me here, but it's definitely looser and the one I'm most happy wearing when it's super hot. So. Okay, I pulled those out and said, okay, you've got those. I have a number of other ones that, um, okay, I'm gonna pause just for a minute because the Mo Blow It and Go guy is here. Okay, it's the neighbor's guy and he always comes at 11 and I should know better. Um, so anyway, I am thinking about this um, um, because it, it is always nice to be knitting a summer um, top at some point this summer so I'm starting to look at patterns for that but in the meantime I do have one more finished um, object um, and that is the mountain town hat and I've showed you the pattern before and here's the person wearing it and this is by Elizabeth Doherty, and it is a, um, oh, light worsted weight yarn. And I ended up going into my um, stash. I have a mystery yarn that I intended to use quite a long time ago for a loved one. And so this is, um, now I haven't blocked it yet, but you can see the, um, the design there. Um, it's a little fitted for my, um, for my taste. The only, and, but I like the pattern a lot. It was very fun. Um, I talked about some mitts with the same design that I did, um, I think the last episode. The only thing I didn't like about it was um, there's a ribbed, the ribbing, I don't know if this was me or the pattern, but it's, um, it's a, okay, you slip two with yarn in back and then you purl one. So slip two with yarn in back, purl one. And then the next row you knit two, purl one. And I, um, it didn't, you can see it, right. it's kind of cute that way, but it sure didn't look like the one in the pattern, um, the picture in the pattern, so I don't know. But I think when you put it on, um, and I'm not going to because, um, um, It'll fit the recipient beautifully, but, um, and she'll look great in it. Um, so I'm happy to do it for somebody, but, um, um, anyway, not, it's just a little bit tight for me. I like, um, I like berets and tams and stuff. 
But anyway, so that was fun, um, fun to work on. I got, I got, conf I lost track at some point. I don't know what happened. I was doing something, got distracted, and I started ripping it out. And my husband said, just put it aside. And so you might just tell all of your loved ones, all your friends and loved ones, that if you get frustrated, get frustrated, tell them to just say to you, put it aside and go back to it later. Because the minute I picked it up later, I was back on track. So he saved me a lot of grief there. That's for sure. Um, okay. I have a few um, whips. One I told you about last time is the uh, Gamma Shawl, which is an old pattern. Um, that's the pattern, and it is by Larissa Brown. Um, and this is one that people in my knitting group have, some people have knit many, many of, um, because it is just so easy and fun. Um, so here it is so far, and I'm using, so what you do is you knit this piece right here, which could be striped, and it was in the sample, and then, um, you pick up along this row, and so you're, um, increasing on one side and decreasing on the other and um, I've really been enjoying that I have one these I got at an estate sale at least um, I bet it was in 2020 so this one is a complete mystery but I loved how nice and rich and dark that it's almost like a purpley blue and then this one is uh, very soft and it is let me untwine this label it's fleece artist from nova scotia and it is called cash lana and it's 90 percent wool 10 percent cashmere and it really is quite soft um I almost thought it was super washed, but it doesn't say that it is, so I'm assuming it's not. Um, it's actually not, the white doesn't pop out nearly as much except in this light. But anyway, so they've been fun, and I might, um, I might put one more color in there. For, oh, and I did a striping. of just really some little ball in my stash for that one. So I might do a little bit more striping, but it's very, it's a, it's a absolutely mindless. And you, you know, often people say that and they're talking about doing cables in a movie theater. No, when I say mindless, I mean, it's really mindless. It's, I mean, you do have to mark your, put a little pin on the right side so you know, um, when to do the increases, decreases, but it's it's just super easy. Um, there are several other, um, I've been seeing so many shawls lately. Um, Hohi Locatelli has a new shawl out. Um, and I'm also looking at a, a Sari Nordland um, shawl. I'll put the links for these below. Um, it's a little, it's a, more of like a mini shawl, sort of like the Sophie scarf, um, but it has a lot of cabling and I really need to just make myself do a lot of cabling. So um, there's also a new um, cabled um, vest and sweater by uh, the Crea Bea. It's not out yet, I don't think. It's just being tested, but I saw um, um, it is a Sarah podcast. She had it and it was like, so I need to just do enough of it. So I just feel more confident doing, it. I know how to cable, but, um, 
I just haven't done enough of it so that I feel super confident reading the charts. That's my issue. Okay, so all this weather um, being nice made me think, oh, my fail. I will tell you about my fail and then um, what I'm planning to do <laughs> instead of it. So at one point, if you've watched all my podcasts, you've seen this come up at some point. I bought yarn at um, either Black Sheep Gathering or Oregon Flock and Fiber um, from a small provider. And um, it's Gotland wool. And I absolutely love Gotland because it is a total gray. Um, it's actually looking a tiny bit brown in this light. It is an absolute gray, which I, here's another Gotland, but not from a different um, uh, a sheep uh, farmer. Um, and that's also a Gotland. I just, I love that. This is, this one is from um, Apple Tree Farm right here in Eugene. Um, I don't think she sells a lot of volume, um, um, but um, anyway, I love the Gotland sheep are just an absolute gray, not with, with not uh, brown in them. And um, so anyway, I really like this yarn. Um, but it was hand spun, so we're not even going to chat about what I might have spent for it. But, <laughs> um, so I decided that I, um, a while ago, um, you might have heard me talk about that I wanted to make some vests for myself that were buttoned down and that were more tunic length rather than just the usual um, waist length that we do for vests often. So I wanted it really tunic length so I could put it over leggings. Um, maybe I'd have like a turtleneck and leggings and I'd be able to put this on or, um, or over leggings for after my exercise class. So there's all kinds of ways that I deal with this. I sometimes I put a little skirt on or whatever, but um, I decided that I was going to make um, a longer vest. I actually have one um, that I bought quite a few years ago um, that is not knitted um, and I do like it although it's gotten a tiny bit snug. Um, so anyway I got excited about this idea and I um, had purchased some of this yarn and I knew it was going to be um, something out it's not um next to skin soft by any means um but i decided to make the burgos vest by rosa pomore and it is a um uh the gauge is um 16 and a half stitches for 10 centimeters or four inches. Um, and um, for the pattern, she held a skein of, or she held wool with silk mohair. And she didn't really say the weight, but it, anyway, so I'm, to me that's like um, 16 and a half is, is worsted weight for me or Aaron. Um, there's a range in there and I am using, um, well, I'm going to make it this vest, uh, one way or another, but this is a fail and I'm going to, I'm not even going to rip it out. I don't think my, my knitting group suggested that I felt it and see what happened. But the problem, I knew the problem was coming and yet I kept knitting. I kept thinking, oh, it'll block out and so forth. But the problem is that the yarn I got was spun to, um, it was overspun is what my spinning friends tell me. I'm not a spinner, but it became, it is overspun, oops, 
as I fall over here, um, it is over, um, it is biasing. So it is going this way. And you can even you can even see it on the on the back. Um, let's see if you can see. So it is all going this way, just like this. Um, and I guess I never really understood what a serious problem that was. And then you can see for the front, um, it's just it's just like angling off. I've tried everything. I couldn't even block it straight. Um, and it's just like going like this. So Dennis said, maybe you could make it an art piece or something. Well, there are many ways to deal with this that could involve me having more of a relationship with this yarn um, and this project. But I have decided that it, I'm not. I am not continuing our relationship here. It could be that I, there are all kinds of tricks I could do. Um, I could, um, I have all kinds of ideas. I thought, oh, I could, sh you, go, you know, pick up some stitches and do a short row. I could do some, you know, make it an art piece, like he said, and, you know, or just, I had all kinds of ideas. Um, I could felt the yarn and try and do something with the yarn, but I don't know. You know, I'm in my, I'm over 70. I do not get to knit forever. I want to pick things that I really, really like, and it's really giving me fun. And somebody could be having a lot of fun with this um, if I were a different person or a different per time of my life or even, um, you know, four months ago, who knows, um, this would be something that I would just figure out a way to make it work for me. It would be super warm and toasty. What happened is it's not a steaked pattern, but I ended up having so much trouble purling. Um, the yarn just kept twisting over that I decided to join it in the round and steak it, which would have been kind of fun because I haven't done that in a while. And um, even that didn't solve the problem. So I am taking all of it. I have some extra yarn. I'm gonna um, see if they will take it at, um, we have a local place where they accept supplies for art supplies of all sorts, including yarn and fabric and i'm going to put it in a bag and if they don't take it then i'll give it to um saint vincent de paul <laughs> and and there's just a lot of it it just is um so anyway it's you know you don't have to do everything you don't have to keep doing something if it's just making you miserable you can rip it out. You can start something new. Um, um, there are tricks you can do if you have come across yarn that is over twisted. I've heard from my spinning friends. You can rewind it, put it on your um, Swift and rewind it. You can um, thwack it and try and loosen it up, you know, rewash it. There are all kinds of things that I might have done earlier on. But having gotten this far, I am um, giving up on it. I might actually, I might actually put it in a bag and see if anybody um, at Youthful Fiber wants it. So if somebody is watching from there, <laughs> you can remind me. But I have decided that I am going forth with this project with different yarn and so I have some I got at a recent estate sale um, we have a Eugene textile um, and they sometimes have um, estate sales and it was absolutely phenomenal by um, the yarn belonged to a, a woman who had is still who has not passed away but is no longer able to knit 
and they said she was a professional knitter and it, they couldn't even put it out at once. It took them months to get it all inventoried and put out. And so I did grab some of it. Um, and one of the pieces I got was I have two skeins of this yarn. It's an Aran weight, 100% wool. It is uh, by Selkirk and um, 272 yards made in Canada, and I have two skeins of this one. Um, so I feel pretty confident I'll have enough. I will just, it's a, a top-down pattern. I will just knit until I run out. And I also have, this is a different yarn, um, but I could use this for the ribbing, um, the uh, button band if I, if I, I mean, it's not the greatest though. So anyway, this probably will be um, um, not as long as I want, but I'm gonna start with this one. I have a couple other uh, vest pro uh, projects, um, but there really is quite a bit of uh, yardage in here and it's Aaron weight. So I think it, it will get me um, She's made it, I think the pattern calls for it to be a little, um, do I have it here? Um, it might be a little cropped, but I'm so short that cropped usually on me means normal um, size. So I don't, they, I'm not seeing a pattern in this, uh, a picture here. But it's an ordinary vest, button down. You pick up the button band. Um, a simple but very fun vest. So anyway, can you see? It's we're in the um, burgundy merlo uh, purpley phase, <laughs> and my um, and my shawl. It's just too funny. I go in phases. Um, so what that one? I just. I just um, cast it on last night, and this is the back. And then you do some um, increases here, and this will be the shoulder. So um, you you knit in separate pieces until you um, join after the sleeves, and it just it's moving so quickly without twisted yarn. So I think I'll be finished uh, fairly rapidly. So, okay, I have the shawl, I have that one, and I think the only other thing I have is that there's new babies around, and um, my um, my granddaughter, the, the my younger granddaughter, I've been thinking of knitting a pullover for her, because I haven't knit her a sweater in a while, and um, so I decided that the Queensland United yarn um, would actually be good for babies because it is machine washable. It's supposed to be organic. Um, on the old label, it said it was GOT certified. I'm not sure, and their label is almost impossible to read. It is so, so tiny. Even with my glasses, I just can't read the darn thing. But um, as I mentioned before, it's 50% wool, 50% cotton. Um, the cotton's organic. It says organic. So um, I've been thinking, and I have, this is the same yarn. Um, it's a, it is a, it's a very uh, soft kind of a, um, it would be great for kind of a spring, fall, and in our in our world, um, definitely in the evenings, even in the hot summer. We usually need a sweater. So anyway, um, I was at, um, I went to a yarn store in Brownsville, and I hadn't been there for years. I thought it was closed. Um, it's right, if you're on the freeway, you go one way to go to Halsey and the other way to go to Brownsville. So it's a, it's a very small little town, 
really sweet. Sometimes they've, I've been there for antique shows. Um, um, they have a nice, um, the Lynn County Museum is there and a very nice yarn store. And she happened to have Queensland United. Um, so I found two skeins of this one color called Peppermint. And then I ended up going to my local yarn store, Cozy, and noticed they also had the same color. And of course, by then I'm thinking, do I have enough of that yarn? Um, and this color is called Lichen. So anyway, what I want to do is make a DK weight sweater knot. This is more, um, I think they say sport, but I've used it for fingering. And so I'm going to do a DK weight um, sweater held together. Um, help with the yarn held together. It's 250 yards. One of these I got for $7, 250 yards. Can't beat it, folks. This one was $8. So I'm going to hold them together. I think it'll make a really nice, um, I'm just going to do a very simple pattern. I have a couple to choose from but I'm hoping to do some embroidery on it. So we will see about that. Um, and I also got some more yarn um, because there's a new baby um, among my friends that's coming and I want to be ready. Um, and so um, they wanted some earthy tones, um, but then they showed pictures of dusty pinks and dusty blues. And I'm sure they don't even call this pink, but anyway, um, I'm going to hold this with um, a dusty blue. And um, then it'll be, anyway, they're going for gender neutral. And this is a, this is almost like a, it's not clay, but um, it's almost a non-color. What do they call it? Um, Okay, well, I don't agree. They're calling it lavender. I, it's just, it's almost, um, I don't know. I don't know what, dusty rose maybe. I'll go, with, I'd accept that. But anyway, so that is a little plan that, that should come along really quickly. So, um, okay, before I leave, I just want to tell you about a couple books. Um, <clears throat> I'm only telling you things that really give me pleasure because I read some, I read a lot and I also read a lot of nonfiction. I read a lot of news. I read a lot on the internet. Um, but I want to tell you the things I'm aiming for joy here. And so a number of people are taught, you know, podcasters will talk about what's bringing me joy. I think that's a good way to do it. Um, if I thought something was really profound, um, I will mention it if I think it's just like a really important book or a really great book, even if it's not bringing you great joy. Um, but I'm really looking, I'm really being um, discerning here in terms of what I um, bring you. So, um, but I very much enjoyed Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Um, which had been hard to get, but then we ordered it in the large print and it came right through. Um, and we had seen the um, television series for Lessons in Chemistry. Usually we go the other way. Um, Dennis and I, like we do a lot of the same reading, not everything by any means, but um, that one, we both saw the show, which we really enjoyed and watched the, um, the um, and then read the book um, and really did it very quick enjoyable read. And all I can say is um, the main character needed Title IX <laughs> to be passed. She was just too early. Um, so anyway, um, it's most, it's about a woman who is a chemist. She has a master's in chemistry and she um, works in a lab and she just can't get anywhere because 
At that time, the late 50s, early 60s, women were not chemists. It just, no. Maybe you could go to school if you were very, very gifted, but you, no, you weren't going to be a chemist. You'd have to be extraordinary. And what we're aiming for is for um, everybody to be able to do some, the things that there are out there to do um, without being the most amazing, not the Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but the somebody who's just as smart as the guys. That's all. So anyway, poor character. She and, and the conclusion is just delightful. Delightful. Um, I also read two um, yarn knitting related books. One was The Lost Flock by Jane Cooper. And this is about a woman who lives in the Orkney, um, um, is she on Orkney Island or one of the islands up near Orkney? And she is um, um, raising bure sheep, which are, uh, are a primitive breed. They don't need to be sheared. And for a long time, we're on Bure Island. Um, and um, all, the book is all about her ra becoming a, a sheep farmer, raising the sheep and trying to um, increase the breed. Um, and so now it's no longer on the, um, I think it was on the very endangered list um, and is now um, rare, but not endangered, something like that. Um, so that was just a fascinating story. Um, and then I read a book called um, In the Footsteps of Sheep by uh, Deborah Zimmerman. And it's about her journey um, through, the Sco um, through Scotland um, looking for the more rare breeds of sheep and um, spinning. She has a drop spindle and she's spinning and knitting socks with yarn that she um, picks up from these um, uh, primitive breeds um, and knitting them into, um, into socks. So it's a really um, interesting book. She goes to Shetland, she goes to um, Orkney, she goes to the St. Kilda Archipelago, she goes to the Outer Hebrides. Um, she really is, um, okay, I'm, I have to think she's a little eccentric, a uh, little unusual. Um, she gets her rucksack on and she's camping out doing all of this. It's, it's uh, very fun. And if you're not going to be doing that, it's kind of a nice vicarious thrill. Um, I, I really enjoyed um, it quite a bit. I have two, a couple things I'll say about the book just for um, moderating expectations. She, um, she has a number of patterns in there um, that were later knit. So she's come up with these patterns for socks and they were later knit by other people, I think, um, with yarn that she did not find. And so I, we don't really see pictures of the, um, of the of um, all of these socks um, knit with the yarn she found. Um, she also doesn't caption her pictures. So she has a few things about it that are uh, a little puzzling, but um, I really I found it quite delightful. I actually um, read the book quite a while ago. I hope I haven't talked about it here. Maybe I have. I got the book quite a number of years ago, um, but it's um, it was mentioned in the Lost Flock. Jane Cooper mentions this in the footsteps of sheep in her book, and I decided to pull it out, and I actually enjoyed it very much more the second time, maybe because I I know a little bit more about yarn. Um, also. Um, she doesn't go into a lot of detail about each of the breeds. So you might want to 
keep your copy of, um, I think it's Fleece and Fiber, my Fleece and Fiber source book I will keep near me um, as I'm going back and looking at, at um, what she talks about. But it's a delightful book, and I think you'd enjoy it. Okay, I should wrap this up. I'm, I'm running close to an hour, which I didn't expect. Um, I hope you are enjoying spring, however it is coming to you, and that you are having a fine time with all your crafting, and I hope to see you soon. So do like and subscribe if you've found something of interest here, and happy knitting!